I, uh, I didn't come up here to preach this morning, but you know me. Um, I just wanted to keep it light today and, and uh, just excited about what's going on in, in, uh, in this next week and what's going on in our church, just uh, the opportunity to, opportunity to teach, um, opportunity to share the message of Jesus Christ. You know, as I, as I, was, um, as I was standing there thinking, uh, <laughs> wouldn't it be neat to do a Bible school for adults? Wouldn't it be neat to do that? And have some classes that, you know, just interesting classes, things that, I don't know, maybe we could poll people and say, what is it about, um, you know, about Christ or about your Christian walk that you'd want to learn about? And just have a week where we, we did five nights, did three nights of just a Bible school for adults. Maybe have some activities in it too. I don't know. We're a pretty competitive bunch. We could come up with some games. I'm sure that we could, we could have a blast at. You know, most of us like to be big kids anyway. And I don't know. Something to think about. But um, anyway, that isn't at all what I was going to talk about this morning. But... Um, I'd been searching the scriptures for challenges because we're about to take on a challenge here this week. And, and uh, you know, there's a lot of good challenges that we're taking on in, in scripture. You know, uh, Noah building that ark was a pretty good challenge. I mean, think about it. It was a huge challenge. Um, you know, I think about the, 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 uh, the children of Israel crossing over the Jordan River into the promised land. That was a great challenge. The river was flooded. And, and then even, you know... Um, uh, the Battle of Jericho, you know, all these things that happened there was great, took great faith and what a great challenge. Don't forget Gideon and his 300 and, and we just have lots and lots of challenges when you think about it in the, in the God's word about how God's people took on these challenges and, and um, one thing, well, maybe a couple of things that, that was constant throughout all of those challenges. Number one, God it was constant throughout all those challenges. But it took, it took great faith to, um, to take on these challenges. But the thing that, 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 that come back to my mind, and maybe this doesn't seem quite as exciting as, um, as crossing the Jordan River, or crossing the Red Sea, or, you know, but I got to thinking about Jesus sending out the 70, as we find in, uh, in Luke 10. And, and Jesus, you know, he sent out the 12 at one time, but then he had 70, which is kind of interesting because our church is about 70 people. So, you know, when we think about this size group and, and Jesus sent them out, Luke 10, 1 through 12. I don't have it on the screen this morning. I just, if you pull it up, I didn't, lead, didn't uh, load you version this week. Sorry about that. Uh, just now, a lot of things going on the week before Bible school. Um, Luke 10, 1 through 12. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them out two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Then he said to them, the harvest is truly great, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest and send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. Carry neither money bag, knapsack, nor sandals, and greet no one along the road. But whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest on it. If not, it will return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking such things as they give, for the laborer is worthy of his wages. Do not go from the house to house, whether city you, whatever city you enter, and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you and heal the sick there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whatever city you enter and they do not receive you, 
Go out into the streets and say, The very dust of your city which clings to us we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near you. But I say to you that it will be more tolerable in the day that Sodom and Gomorrah than for that city. Um, I don't know. This is crazy, crazy instruction when you think about it. This is 70 people standing before Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ himself is giving them instructions about how to do ministry, about how to go into these cities and do ministry. I mean, that's wild when you think about it, isn't it? God, uh, Jesus said that, um, he said that go out into these cities that I am going to go to. So he's telling these people to go out and prepare these people. I'm going to go into these cities, but go out and prepare these people. And you know, isn't that what we're going to do this week? Isn't that what we are really been commissioned to do this week is to go out and prepare? You know, we can't make decisions for people. Sometimes I wish, many times I wish we could, but we can't make decisions for people, but we can go out and prepare. And we've already started preparing an atmosphere, a fun atmosphere for, for kids to come in. You know what's neat already? I was sitting there in that seat back there and I was watching kids come through that tunnel and just to see them come through that tunnel. They're like, you know, they're this tall, but they're going <laughs> you know? and, and it's already setting an atmosphere like this is going to be fun I want to know what they're doing in here I want to learn what they're doing we're preparing those kids for the work that Jesus Christ can do in their lives man what, a, what an amazing commission that is Jesus said go out go out into these cities that, that I am going to go to and, and, and what did Jesus say here? He said, you know, the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. Sounds to me like volunteers were hard to get a long time ago, too. He says, pray for volunteers. Pray for laborers. Because the harvest is ready. And then he says something very encouraging to these guys. He's saying, I'm sending you out as lambs among wolves. That sounds, that's a pretty good description for children's ministry, isn't it? If you ever walked into a room of five-year-olds or six-year-olds, you know, you, it's, a, it's a pretty good description. But, but what I, 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 I appreciate about this is that Jesus is just being honest. He's saying, you know what, guys? Don't think that it's going to be easy. Don't think that it's going to be a vacation, don't think that it's going to be, you know, just because you're going out in my name, just because you're doing God's will, it doesn't mean that it's easy. Sometimes it's the hardest work. Sometimes it's the most difficult work. Sometimes doing God's work can be the most discouraging work. It can doesn't mean it's not worth it. It doesn't mean that you're not doing God's will. And it doesn't mean that God's not in it. It's just sometimes it's hard. And then he tells them, he's really, this is such a pep talk. I don't know, I think somebody needed to tell Jesus, teach Jesus a little something about pep talks. First he tells them, you know, that we don't have enough help. And then he says, we're going to send you out like, like sheep among wolves. And, and then he says, oh, also, don't take anything extra with you. Don't take any extra clothes. Don't take any sandals. Don't, don't take any extra money. Don't take anything extra with you, by the way. <laughs> Why did he say that? Why did Jesus say that? Now, we could say, and, I, and I, I think it's very valid, we could say that it's teaching them about faith to just go. If, just, just go, and I'll take care of you. Just go. And I think, that's, I think that's very true, but I think there's something else. Anybody know what it is? Why would Jesus just tell them that? He also, he also, told, them, um, he also told them not to greet anyone. Why would Jesus do that? Why would he do that? Anybody know? Anybody have any ideas? I think the reason why is because the harvest is ripe. 
and there's an urgency. What happens if you're going on a trip and you start preparing? This takes a lot of time, don't it? It takes a lot of time to start buying the stuff you're going to need and preparing and make sure you've got everything and packing everything and all of this. And Jesus is saying, no. No, the harvest is ripe. And we've got to go. You can't, you can't take time to do all this. And even the greeting people back then, a greeting was different than, my, than what we might say, hey, how you doing? You know, sometimes a greeting meant that you, you, you stayed with this person and you maybe even had a meal with them and it was kind of almost a ceremonial kind of thing. Jesus said, you don't have time for that. We got to go into these cities because they need to know the word. They need to know who Jesus Christ is. We don't have time. Just go. Just go. There's an urgency here. I think about, I think about uh, down in the flatlands in, in the fall of the year, and, and, and you can go down there, and, and, and you can see um, at nighttime. Did you ever go down the flatlands at nighttime, and, and um, they got these big old combines, and they got these huge lights, and I mean, the world's lit up down there. Why? Because most of the time they're trying to beat a rain to get their crop in because the harvest is ripe. It's time. It's time. It doesn't matter if it's night. Get some lights on your rigs. It doesn't matter. We got to get this done. Don't worry about extra money. Don't worry about your sandals. Don't worry about extra clothes. It's time. It's ripe. Let's go. Let's go. So he sends them. And he also, something else he tells them, very, very good pep talk here. He says, and also, the message that you deliver is not always going to be accepted. It's not always, people are, are, people are not going to like what you have to say. Especially when you talk about sin. They're not going to agree with you and some are, will be offended but go, but go. And I think this is such an important message that we find in this, this instruction that Jesus gave to, this, to these disciples of his. Number one, he said, the harvest is ripe. It's time to go. Don't wait around. Don't, don't, don't think about things. <laughs> it's time to go. And number two, he says, you know, it's not always going to be easy. Matter of fact, sometimes it's going to be real hard. But you do it anyway. And you know what's neat? Now, and, and I, I didn't include this in the, in the scripture that I read. But if we read just a little farther, what happens? They come back. And they are like pumped. They're like, Jesus, you can't believe the things that happened. You can't believe the things we were able to do. This was so cool. They were blessed. They went in faith and they were blessed. Wasn't easy, but they went in faith and they were blessed. And I pray that that, that is our attitude today as we enter into this week of ministry, that we, um, we understand the urgency. We understand that it's about faith. It's about, it's about just going Everything, you know what? Everything's not always going to be in order. We're not always going to have everything in place. And you know what? It doesn't really matter. Let's just go. Let's just do this. And we don't always think that we have the talents and the gifts and the abilities. But you know what? Just do it anyway. Just jump in and go and be faithful. You'll be amazed what might happen to your life. You'll be amazed what might happen to those around you. Just go. So that's my thought this morning about, um, about our challenge that is laid before us. And, and like I said, I, I, I don't want to take up too much time, but I want to introduce this next song. And I, I appreciate these guys coming and doing all this music today because, you know, two weeks ago, after they got done with church, they had to take all of their music equipment down, put it in the back room because we started on the stage.
And then last Sunday, they had to drag everything back out for church. And then after they were done, they had to drag everything back to the back because we're still working on the stage. And then for church today, they brought everything back in. And they brought everything, especially, probably, mainly because <laughs> one of the songs that I'm having them sing. And I said, let's just do a, let's just do a, a you know, just do mostly worship today. And so after they're done today, they're going to drag everything back off the stage. And so we can have Bible school. And then for church next Sunday, they're going to bring everything back. So, so they're doing more moving than, um, than like if they were on tour or something. So uh, I appreciate them. I appreciate the hard work they do. I, um, I contacted Brandon again. Brandon, Brandon probably, whenever he sees a text from me, he's probably like, oh, no. <laughs> what does he want me to do this time? I, uh, I like this group called Skillet. And uh, I like the intensity that they, they deliver their songs. I think they're very well written. Most of them are. And there's a song that they have called Hero. And, of course, so fitting that we're talking about superheroes, we're talking about heroes for Bible school. But um, in this song, it's just this guy, he's like, you know what? I'm just a step away from losing my faith. Things are just so crazy. I just see, I just see life around us falling apart. I see the violence in this world. I see families being torn apart. I see all of this stuff happening and, and I don't know. I don't know. I'm just about to lose my faith. I'm just a step away from losing my faith. But what can I do about it? He says, I'm just a man. I'm not a superhuman. What can I do about it? There's a line here. It says, it's just another war. It's just another family torn. Falling from my faith today. He says, you know what we need? We need a hero. We need a hero to save us now. We need a hero just in time. What are these heroes that we see? You know, these, this, all the stories about the superheroes, they're basically written a certain way, aren't they? It's all tragedy. It's all falling apart and the hero comes just in time and saves the day. Well, you know what? The harvest is ripe. We have a lot of problems going on today. We have a lot of torn families going on today. We have a lot of broken hearts happening today. And we need a hero. We need a hero just in time to save us. And then this guy, he says, you know, I got to make a stand. But I'm just a man. I'm not a superhuman. My voice will be heard today. We need a hero. We need a hero to save us now. He says, who's going to fight for the weak? Who's going to make them believe? I've got a hero. I've got a hero living in me. Jesus Christ is our hero. I think we understand that. And I think we know that Jesus Christ is our hero. But how, how is the hero, Jesus Christ, how is he going to affect this world? How is it set up? Jesus Christ is found in the believer and it's got to work through the believer. We're, no, we're not superhumans. But you know what? We have something superhuman inside of us if we have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And we're the heroes. We can do the work of the heroes if we just follow the leading of Jesus Christ. And I believe that's what this song is trying to tell us that we need a hero and we need him just in time. And how is he going to happen? It's going to come through us. Come on up, guys. It's not, it's not a song that you will probably hear on K-Love, <laughs> but, uh, but I love the intensity. Thanks, guys. Hey, um, what we want to do right now is we want to pray for our Bible school, and uh, just love to have everybody that's involved in GBS to please come forward, and uh, we want to live this, this week, this coming week. Up to the Lord, we want to just a blessing upon everybody that's, that's involved. And I can see that, that this service has got everybody excited. They're just running up front so quick. <laughs> everybody that's involved in Bible school or has been involved in Bible school, please come up. Why do you stand there, Danny? Eh? <laughs> Doesn't mean that you're just a teacher. I mean, if you've done anything in Bible school or going to.
been talking about it and something that I feel like that, that they have either a presentation acting or they have music if they're, uh, you know, uh, just interacting with the children. God, just uh, pray that you give them courage and just uh, let your spirit focus on God. Just give them the words they need. And, uh, especially if there's someone that uh, comes forward, God doesn't know you, just uh, Give them that courage, just uh, in the words to, to say that maybe you get a light from God just to help me that the person in the right direction, God, and just uh, to help encourage them to I just want to uh, end today as uh, First Church is joining with us. They don't they don't have a church right now, and uh, well, they don't have a church building. I can't say they don't have a church. Uh, so they're going to join with us, and and uh, I know it's been kind of a hard uh, transition, I guess, for them because uh, <laughs> because I, I, I got to thinking, what if it was the other way around? What if they, you know, what if this church building burned down or a tornado or something happened? And they invited us to be with them. Would we be, how active would we be in their um, So it's kind of hard, you know, it's coming to somebody else. It's coming to somebody else's house. You know, we, we say we're all one church, but we know how it is. It, it, it's kind of difficult. And and so they're going to come and, and they're going to supply some help. And their, uh, their, their men's group is going to cook the hot dogs and everything Friday, and we appreciate them doing that. And, and um, so we need to lift them up as well. Um, I just want to lift the whole, as I pray, I want to lift up our whole Bible school the whole week. I want to lift up First Church, and, and, and uh, I know that Luke um, asked for uh, information about our Bible school and, you know, his place, and, and hopefully we just have... And uh, we're just going with the ball. Uh, matter of fact, uh, I got a message last night from um, a lady that goes to Nemo Baptist, and, and she said that she'd seen some of these characters and things that I put on Facebook. And their camp in Van Buren is going to have a superhero thing you know, come, come about and get some of these. Uh, I, I, I got it. I got it. But anyway, it's kind of neat that, that you know people are getting people are seeing these things and getting excited about it. Um, let's pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we just uh, just pray right now for for this week, and Lord, uh, as and I just pray in agreement with everybody else that has already prayed, Lord, that that we want to lift up the children, we want to we want to bless their lives, we want to plant those seeds, we want to be with the teachers and give them the wisdom and knowledge and the things that they they need, Lord, to to. And, heard the boldness, Lord. We need that boldness. And, and and it's not only as we know, as we know this ministry is not just a children's ministry, it's an adult ministry as well. We learn from this week, Lord. We learn as, as, as we teach, as we lead, we learn. But we want to bring others in too and see what's going on here and, and, and touch their lives and bring families into this church, Lord. And, 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 and we want to lift up those who... who um, have the ability to handle those talents, to be up front and to be seen, Lord, and, and, and to do those things as well. And, and Lord, we do lift up First Church. We, we we pray for them right now. We know that it's a struggle, Lord. But without a building, Lord, that uh, we just lift them up right now and just pray that you just be with them. We pray that we have uh, many that come from their church, and and not only the children but the adults as well. And 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 lay aside those insecurities. And just come and be, be with us and be a part of us, Lord. Lord, we, we, we pray for His place as well. We pray that, uh, that, that their children will come and that we can have uh, a great unity with them as well. And, and all the churches, Lord. We just want to get the message of Jesus Christ across. That is our heart. And as we, as we prayed last week, search our hearts. Search our hearts, O oh Lord. If there is anything, any iniquity in us, Lord, Try us and test us, and we don't want those things that's going to keep us from being open with people, keep us from shining the light of Jesus Christ. Lord, it starts right there. And may we all be heroes 
May we all be heroes by shining in your light, being that, that salt and light that we need to be. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Man, thank you guys for listening.